Now, the thing with solving quadratic equations is that when you are thinking about solving a quadratic equation, you are looking at whether the quadratic curve crosses the x-axis or not. And all of the examples that you will have dealt with previously, uh, that quadratic will be crossing the x-axis if you've been asked to find out uh, to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, Unless it was specifically looking for you to figure out, oh, there are no solutions. Okay. Now, as part of that, you would have been saying that there are no real solutions. So, of course, the fact that you say that there are no real solutions, now you should understand that could mean that there are complex solutions. Okay. So, we are looking at situations where our parabola is either wholly above the x-axis or it is wholly below the x-axis. Okay, and these two situations will elicit complex solutions. So, we're going to look at these three examples. Now, if you were to type these into your Casio ClassWiz calculator uh, using the quadratic solver, then what will happen is that it will give you the results straight out. Um, it is important that you know where these results have come from. Yes, you would be able to use your calculator in an exam situation to solve these quadratics, okay? But, as I said, you need to know where these things come from. And you will become stronger for it once you have gone through the process, okay? So, first thing is first. Uh, we've got this x squared plus one is equal to zero. So in solving that equation, I would take 1 from both sides. So x squared is equal to negative 1. And then I would square root both sides. So we get plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And as we learned in the previous video, Euler said, uh, adopted the letter i to represent the square root of minus 1. And so we have plus or minus i. So the complex solutions to this equation. It has no real solutions. It has two complex solutions, plus i and minus i. Okay? And so that is the first one. Now, with the second one, of course, I can't, um, I can't rearrange that to get x equals unless I use completing the square. And that's the method I'm going to utilise. Because I can't factorise it. OK. So I'm going to go straight to complete the square and solving. So x plus 1 squared. Take away the square of that number. So take away 1. Oh, sorry. Take away 1. I already have this minus sign there. Plus the 10. It's coming in now. So I've got x plus 1 squared. Now I've got minus 1 plus 10, which is 9. Take that from both sides. We get minus 9 on the right-hand side. Now we're going to square root both sides here. So we get this plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now remember, using your indices knowledge, you can then write that as square root of minus 9 Sorry, square root of 9 times minus 1, like so. You can split that apart, like so. Square root of 9 is just 3, and square root of minus 1 is i. So we've currently got plus or minus 3i. I would expect you to be able to go from this line to that stage in one go. Okay? So rather than having to write out all those li extra lines of working. So how I would want us to do this is, say, square root of 9 is 3. And because we're squaring a negative, we have 3i, plus or minus 3i. OK? Then you can take 1 from both sides. And we've got minus 1, plus or minus 3i. And they are the complex solutions to number two. Okay, so that's number two.
Right, let's have a look at number three then. So now that we've got this completed square idea down, um, let's go with that method for number three. So we've got 2x squared plus 8x plus 9 is 0. So I'm going to factor the 2 out of the first two terms, x squared plus 4x plus 9 equals 0. Then I'm going to complete the square on the inside, so we've got x plus 2, all squared, take away the square of 2, so take away 4 plus the 9 is 0. Then multiply out. Okay, so we've got two lots of x plus 2 squared. We've got minus 8 plus 9, which is 1. So I've got to subtract 1 from both sides. So we've now got x plus 2 squared is minus a half. Okay. So now I need to square root both sides. So I've got x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus. Now the square root of a half is 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2, you can rationalise the denominator, multiplying it top and bottom by root 2, to get root 2 over 2. So we'd have plus or minus root 2 over 2i, because we've got the minus sign there. And then subtracting 2 from both sides, we've got minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2i. Now, as I said, you should be able to find each of these answers on your calculator. But if you haven't understood as to where these answers are coming from, okay, then you're going to be really missing some information. So this is how you can find those answers. Um, algebraically, this is why your calculator is giving you these results.